June 13th, 2013. The Williams Geismar Olefins plant in Geismar, Louisiana. A heat exchanger violently ruptured, causing an explosion and fire that killed two workers. The Chemical Safety Board launched an investigation and issued a case study. In it, the agency describes a number of process safety management program deficiencies at Williams, which set the stage for the incident. In particular, the CSB found that the heat exchanger that failed was completely isolated from its pressure relief valve. When pressure inside the heat exchanger dangerously increased, there was nothing to stop a catastrophic rupture. Our case study on the explosion at Williams describes an ineffective process safety management program at the plant at the time of the incident. We urge other companies to learn from our investigation, to incorporate our recommendations at their facilities, and to assess the current state of their process safety culture so that a similar accident can be averted. The Williams Geismar Olefins plant is located in Geismar, Louisiana. The plant produces ethylene and propylene. These are chemicals used in the petrochemical industry to make a variety of products, including plastics and antifreeze. Within the Williams process is a distillation column called the propylene fractionator. It separates a mixture of propane and propylene. Heat exchangers called reboilers supply heat to the fractionator to boil the propane and propylene mixture, which is essential to the separation process. The reboilers are shell and tube heat exchangers. Hot water flows through the tubes, heating and vaporizing propane that flows through the shell and back to the propylene fractionator. The water that flows through the tubes contains a small amount of oily tar, which condenses into the water earlier in the process. Over time, the oily tar from the water builds up on the walls of the reboiler tubes. This buildup is called fouling. Fouling reduces the efficiency of the reboilers. Periodically, the reboilers must be shut down to clean the tubes. The original propylene fractionator design had both reboilers running simultaneously. But in that configuration, the fractionator had to be shut down when a reboiler fouled and needed cleaning. To prevent shutdown of the propylene fractionator each time the reboilers needed to be cleaned, in 2001, new valves were installed on each reboiler to allow for operation of only one at a time. The other reboiler is on standby, clean and ready for use. But unforeseen at the time, these valves introduced a serious hazard. They isolated the standby reboiler from its protective pressure relief valve located on top of the fractionator. On June 13th, 2013, during a daily meeting with operations and maintenance personnel, the Williams plant manager noticed that the water flow rate through the operating reboiler had dropped gradually over the past day. The operations supervisor informed the group he would try to identify the problem. He went into the plant to evaluate the water flow rates. The operations supervisor informed several personnel that fouling within the operating reboiler could be the problem, and they might need to switch the reboilers. He attempted to meet with his manager so they could get the necessary maintenance and operations personnel involved who would perform the work. But his manager was not available. The operations supervisor returned to the field. The CSB determined that at 8.33 a.m., the operations supervisor likely opened the water valves on the standby reboiler. Hot water began flowing inside. The valves blocking the reboiler from its protective pressure relief valve remained closed. But unknown to the operations supervisor, the standby reboiler contained flammable liquid propane that had accumulated during the 16 months the reboiler was out of service. The hot water quickly heated the liquid propane confined inside of the reboiler and pressure dangerously increased. Just three minutes later, the reboiler violently ruptured. Propane exploded from the reboiler and ignited to create a massive fireball. The explosion killed the operations supervisor and an operator working nearby. 167 Williams employees and contractors reported being injured. During its investigation, 
the CSB found that prior to the explosion, the standby reboiler had been out of service for over a year, isolated from the process by closed block valves. But during this 16-month period, liquid propane unintentionally entered the shell of the reboiler, perhaps through a mistakenly opened valve or a leaking block valve. The CSB determined that when the operations supervisor opened the hot water valves to the standby reboiler, the propane liquid trapped inside was heated and expanded in volume to completely fill the reboiler shell. This caused pressure to dramatically increase until the reboiler ruptured. When identifying overpressure protection requirements for heat exchangers, engineers should evaluate the scenario that caused the Williams explosion. The hot side of the heat exchanger was operated while the cold side was blocked in. In this scenario, just having a pressure relief valve available could have prevented the explosion. The CSB discovered that in the 12 years leading to the incident, a series of process safety management program deficiencies caused the reboiler to be unprotected from overpressure. When Williams installed the process block valves on the reboilers in 2001, they performed a management of change review to identify how this action affected the safety of the process. The CSB found, however, that Williams did not identify that the new valves could isolate the reboilers from their protective pressure relief valve. Companies are required to conduct a management of change review before making equipment changes, so they may consider the impact of that change on the safety of the process. But the CSB discovered that Williams conducted the management of change review after the process was already operating with the new valves. We concluded that Williams conducted the delayed management of change to meet regulatory requirements at that point, rather than to use it as a tool to identify and control new process hazards. That was a serious missed opportunity to identify the new overpressure hazard that was introduced to the process by the new valves. After the 2001 reboiler valve installation, Williams also performed a pre-startup safety review as required by regulations. But the CSB found that Williams reviewers did not respond to key process safety questions on the form. One of those questions asked, are pressure relief systems in place and operational? That answer was left blank. Even though the pre-startup safety review document was incomplete and there were questions that were not answered, management approved the form. And the end result was these reboilers were put into service without adequate overpressure protection. The CSB found that in the following 10 years, Williams performed three process hazard analyses, or PHAs, in 2001, 2006, and 2011. None of the PHAs sufficiently identified or controlled the reboiler overpressure hazard. An internal recommendation from the 2006 PHA stated, consider locking open at least one of the manual valves associated with each of the propylene fractionator reboilers. While that recommendation was marked as complete, the CSB found that it was not implemented as intended. A process valve on the operating reboiler was locked open, but a process valve on the standby reboiler was not locked open, even though the PHA recommended that valves on both reboilers should be locked open so that the reboilers had an open path to pressure relief. And the CSB found that Williams failed to develop a procedure for activities performed on the day of the incident. As falling in the quench water system was a known issue, Williams should have had a written procedure to assess fouling and switch the reboilers. Furthermore, the company could have established a routine maintenance schedule to prevent extensive fouling in the first place. One of the key lessons from this incident is the importance of detail when implementing process safety programs. If a critical detail is overlooked in an MOC, in a PSSR, a safeguard evaluation, or a PHA, a significant hazard can be missed, and this can lead to a major incident sometimes years later. At Williams, the overpressure hazard was overlooked in that very first MOC, and that contributed to the explosion that occurred 12 years later. To prevent future incidents and further improve process safety at the Geismar plant, 
the CSB recommended that Williams conduct safety culture assessments that involve workforce participation and communicate the results in reports that recommend specific actions to address safety culture weaknesses, develop a robust safety indicators tracking program that uses the data identified to drive continual safety improvement, and perform comprehensive process safety program assessments to thoroughly evaluate the effectiveness of the facility's process safety programs. In its case study, the CSB encourages companies from across the country to review and incorporate the safety lessons and recommendations from the Williams-Geismar plant investigation within their own facilities. Many of the incidents that the CSB has investigated could have been prevented if an effective process safety management program had been in place at the facility. Managers must implement and then monitor these programs and encourage a strong culture of safety to protect workers and the environment. For further information about the CSB's Williams-Geismar plant investigation, please visit csb.gov.